I V M. The evolution of what brands look at their partners for has resulted in many stages of reinvention of agencies. You know, restructuring, reinventing themselves. This has also led to many agency professionals who spent a large part of their careers in the world of you know large scale agency networks to decide to set out to reinvent this model, kind of built it out from scratch. One such company is Tilt Brand Solutions, and today I have Shriram Iyer, the Chief Creative and Content Officer, and Rajiv Chatterjee, the Chief Business Officer, and also the head of Tilt Studios, on this episode of Advertising is Dead, to not just understand how they see this model evolve. but also to dip into that experience to understand the balance of traditional and new age that actually a modern brand partner requires i'm arun dugirala the co-founder and co-chief of the glitch we're right back with advertising is dead look up in the internet it's a meme no it's a cat video no it's the geek fruit podcast That's right. We interrupt this riveting broadcast to tell you about our show, The Geek Fruit Podcast, where Tejas Dinkar and I, Jishnu, talk about everything in pop culture, including DC, Marvel, Star Wars, Netflix, and everything in between. You know how your friends hate it when you ramble about some nerdy crap, and you just want somebody to listen to you. Well, sorry, there's nothing we can do about that. But come listen to us ramble, and it'll almost be like the real thing, kind of. Listen to new episodes of the Geek Fruit podcast every Monday and the Geek Fruit Bulletin every Thursday on iTunes, Google Podcasts, the IVM app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy listening, you nerds! Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. Uh, we with Shriram and Rajiv. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, I would have liked to have done this in a studio, but I guess this is the way we record podcasts yes, now. Lockdown for uh, recording techniques. Yeah. and i will also say that i will try my best to make sure that i don't and push you both to not use the words new normal or unprecedented in this conversation i think we've all heard those words right uh but i think can i start off and i'll like post this question to both of you one after the other um what do you see brands really looking for in their partners today if you look at today's scenario shiram i'll start with you so uh, i think that the level of engagement uh, needs to be deep they really want us to be partners in the true sense uh the, the relationship we used to say partners at one point and not mean it so much but now i think that that it's got a really uh, it's, there is a deeper meaning to that word that both client and agency are investing uh otherwise you can't get by these situations for sure and i'm hoping it becomes a habit as we get out of this you know so, um, it's quite cohesive and uh, the it's not a what do you call it so we were chatting earlier and saying it's, it's not an assembly line process anymore like everyone is in on the big problem right from the beginning so mm-hmm. so you're sort of responsible for your business outcome you see you as the people can contribute to to business and not just communications and things like that. the role has become more holistic yeah uh yeah so uh, essentially it's 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 a lot more partnership in really what's going on rajiv what do you think is happening so I, i actually kind of find it a little amusing that uh, i mean the way i look at it life has actually come a full circle because uh there was a point in time when uh, the advertising agency was looked at as the partner to uh, a brand and there were as much gatekeepers to the brand as the brand owners themselves uh somewhere down mm-hmm. the line with fragmentation of expertise you know media agencies digital agencies above the line agencies below the line agencies that kind of got fragmented and the cmos and the brand managers had to deal with many people and i i, I genuinely feel that uh, life is coming a full circle now when uh, the clients and the brands are again looking at someone that they can use as a bouncing board for the larger picture while the operations team goes from you know week to week and quarter to quarter i genuinely think clients are again looking at key people and they could come from uh, any agency or uh, any background but i think they're looking for aspiring partners all over again yeah also you know this whole conversation about i mean obviously both of you all have been at agencies before this and I, and i and i want to actually get to saying would you call tilt an agency would you call it a consultancy or are you saying it's an all dif- uh, altogether different model um 
this word has been around for a while um but i think it, it's got in terms of calling it consultancies um but how do you look at yourself so how do you see the model in which you function as i mean either of you can go yeah, i mean we are an agency we are a consultancy too we are probably consultants and we're not calling ourselves consultancy definitely we are uh, we do part of the agency business part of the content business part of even production so i think we have absorbed, we have uh, mutated from uh, you know being seen as agency for to people who can partner clients in their marketing efforts we want we want mm-hmm. and now i don't know what it should be called but if you uh, uh, yes we are creative yes we are strategic Yes, we are understanding more about uh, what it takes to be strategic now. It used to be different earlier on in the uh, network agency scenario. It's different for a startup. Yeah. So I think uh, I think one of the terms that we keep referring to ourselves as is a creative enterprise, and basically that kind of is a word. Enterprise as a word is pretty all-encompassing. Uh, because uh, you know uh, we are uh, an outfit that does only strategic projects we are an outfit that does strategic mm-hmm. and creative projects uh, so mm-hmm. basically we would like to think of ourselves as uh, an enterprise that creatively provides solutions uh, to clients business problems okay so i think what's interesting i mean the big shift i think at least in our heads as well you know when we get out of a uh, classical model of agency is you realize you mm-hmm. you needed to be proactive even back then but uh, but uh, yeah. but uh, today it's it's like there is no other way to be like you don't, you don't yeah. have the option yeah. of being reactive waiting for something to happen you have to as see a problem uh, just like the client sees it or I probably see it before he sees it. So it's, uh, it's just all the more necessary now to be. Uh, and that pretty much connects back to your first question, right? You were asking what brands are looking for. And I think as those needs have evolved, uh, outfits such as ourselves have had to evolve with it. And I, I, I think it's it's a it's a it's a move forward. You know, uh, when I when I when I ran through the kind of uh, not just work, but in terms of the offerings that you have, I, I, I found it interesting when I saw a couple of pieces. One is I, I saw the fact that there was a strong strategy focus there, but but also a strong creation focus. It wasn't just uh, communications and strategy; it was also creation with the studios pieces. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's yeah. something which which I found interesting because. That's something which, in my mind, was something which all agencies plugged in at some point of time. Like, okay, we have a, a, a traditional creative agency structure. We'll add, you know, a studio into the mix. We've had the opposite problem at Glitch, where we started off as a production house and became an agency. So our evolution was 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 bizarrely opposite in that yeah. sense. Um, but uh, when you when you look at that part, how, why did the creation part had to be a core? Um, you know, something that you wanted to include into your mix. So, like you said, Varun. Uh in some parts and in some smatterings creation part of it was being attached to agencies as we knew it uh, but when we all decided to get together we were very clear that when you have the creation aspect also uh, in your control then it gives you the opportunity to optimize at various levels and therefore now even when we uh, kind of go out and pitch our projects to clients or speak to clients about what we can do we actually go with an end to end solution uh and and uh, because uh, things are are moving at such a fast pace today i think there is mm-hmm. uh, uh, i mean there is appreciation in the market for that model share how you've seen the creative process evolve I and mean, has your creative process changed in the way you look at it now versus how you looked at it let's say before it because because that's what even kind of says right where there, there was a traditional creative process yeah. of thinking which obviously then digital um what would you say would be the what have you added what have you taken out if so that had to be the way to put basic it? level of difference no? i remember a time when we knew that uh, we were in systems like lintas and all that 300 odd commercials were being made in a year mm. the classic mm. good old tv commercial and we were all writing those ones There was there was just way too much TV commercial kind of work to do. 
and apparently it was bringing in the money and uh, fame and everything and nobody was complaining uh so the tendency creatively would be film to chu hmm correct and it would not be which hasn't fully gone away yet. which hasn't fully gone away yet as well is what i feel so is which is a, which other problem the deal is that uh, the 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 sheen uh, of uh, ad film socho the more and more creative people we have some of whom we have hired from different places non advertising kind of places that sheen is kind of slightly gone it's become a little matte finish yeah, <laughs> yeah. right uh, and the trip has changed the trip has changed to let's say coming up with an with a tech idea or a, uh, uh, like an act you know like not an ad the ad in some senses has become uncool yeah and uh, i mean luckily we are we are that casting generation of creative people know who got a lot of those ads to do but we weren't too old to not comprehend the new wave you know so i consider people like me kind of lucky that I, with a little bit of effort i can become uh, the non tv commercial thinking creative people person as well this so and then i have a little help from the younger cooler people who i work with <laughs> yeah and i'll get by <laughs> fundamentally that shift is very is the is a is the real shift you know like the script so stay hai is not the first thing we come into the problem so we're also you know which is also what i think and which is sort of thinking like let's say agencies would think because you're coming at like you said you're coming at it from this end and we are we are trying to arrive at you from this end yeah and maybe like a yeah. sweet spot is what we are attempting as to like yeah because for us at like i said the journey was was the opposite because at some point we started off with let's say rest of production for the web went on to doing uh, activations all that stuff now it's come to a point i think last couple of years where we also have to think of writing the tvc yeah. a lot more than we did before so it's that exact opposite journey but the the i think for us the problem is you shouldn't let go of all the other stuff that we've done and 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 become that and and because what will happen is soon you will have the big agency types becoming good at that game yeah as you become i think everybody, <laughs> my mind everybody is playing the yeah, same yeah. game it is all yeah, different thank you it's the same damn game and collaboration and is is the only way yeah You guys have actually had some couple of interesting collabs, right? I mean, there was uh, I I read some time uh, back that you you there are a bunch of uh, partners you kind of built out over, over since you kind of started off. Um, um, I know Supari was one I'd heard of some time back, um, and there there was a couple of others. So how how do you look at that part of it? Because collaboration was um, the way I've seen it is that traditionally the agencies also had a very, like very that approach of okay, all this is mine, like I control this, nobody else can do anything with it. whereas what is required now is is collaboration so how do you kind of how, how do you fit different pieces in there what is you want to take also see varun when you say you know traditionally the agency kind of held on to the whole thing and said this is mine uh hmm. it also came from the landscape that the agency was operating in 100% now because the landscape is so rapidly changing and uh, you know obviously i mean everybody knows that it's uh, it's difficult to build capabilities really fast right so it requires investment it requires training all of that what collaborations do and we've been very particular about the kind of people that we collaborate with uh, so that there is a uh, at the very basic there must be a culture match and an intent match so we must want to do the same thing and thereafter i mean i still think the agency should own uh the the solution and collaborations are just uh, our way of making sure that that solution again like shri ram said it's not just a tvc so while we are building capabilities uh on our own on certain platforms uh certain platforms mm-hmm. it's uh you know more rewarding even for us to kind of lean on somebody else's expertise Uh, can you give some examples of the of the, uh, of the other pieces of the part? I mean, Subari obviously is a production standpoint yeah. and creation yeah. standpoint. Yeah, so we have Fract- yeah. Fractal that kind of uh, helps us with our data and analytics, and uh, we have uh, an LA-based outfit called the Right Network, uh, 
which is basically a, a network of about 30 odd Instagram channels. Uh, and we don't like to call it influencer marketing because in a way, a channel is like a channel and, you know, you go there to consume content and not someone's own idiosyncrasies. I mean, you're not following an influencer, you're following influence. So, yeah, those are the three large kind of uh, collaborations that we operate with at the moment. You know, another piece which I found interesting was, and I looked at the kind of uh, work as well, which was, I mean, I was running through the site. I, I, I do two things before every episode. I stalk my guests' LinkedIn profiles and I try to get as much out of news articles and stuff uh, around uh, work that's been done. And what I found interesting was that um, there is still that core thought on insight. Uh, it's not, so you look at the strategy component, that's obviously large, right? All the pieces you worked on had very core um, strategy driven insights and on that I mean by, by the film might be part of it it, it is still not like you said not the center of it it is a part of the whole yeah. thing if you had to pick a couple of, of cases and kind of run through how your process would differ from what an, what an agency would traditionally do uh, can you pick one and kind of can, maybe you can run through that a bit so uh, like for instance um, live space uh, typically uh, I think a traditional agency which I've been for a long long while so I, I find it strange saying traditional now would would go for the big one yeah, yeah. We'll go for the big thematic uh, umbrella idea a broad stroke insight about uh, homes and happiness and uh, how people can have a great time living a quality life with you know interior design whatever from lipstick we would we would just go straight for the big one thing you one one big team. I think that uh, the shift in the approach now uh, now is that we we sort of said that's not going to work. You know, when you're a big big agency, you want to do that one big ad. Yeah. But actually, those, those yeah. big ones have have slightly stopped working because those. Those insights are just generally like open, you know, somebody will say open happiness, somebody will say push yoga delivery, some non, some very bloody scammy shit like that will happen, you know. Very really generic in that sense. It's so wide that yeah. you even... So, so I think micro insight, uh, if you may call it so, I don't think, that, I don't know if there's a word like that. I'm just using it for uh, like... What is that? But <laughs> I'm guessing this is the yeah, like granular, slightly nuanced micro insights for specific target groups, mm-hmm. and uh, the strategy process identifying exactly who those ta- cohorts are or those target group people are. Suddenly, the nature of mm-hmm. insight changes depending on who you are choosing to talk to and on what medium, and and then you go into the uh, asset development for each. Yeah. I don't think I've followed this approach ever in my life before we decided to do so at it. You know, and uh, and I think we, we consciously came out of our uh, comfortable, big, uh, open happiness <laughs> variety of, uh, just do it variety of advertising. Yeah. To say, but, but I think it makes sense. Because I connected with the live space one a lot. I'll tell you why. Because we just, I'd, I'd finally been through a process of, of, of the first time ever having to do up a house. And, the, those pieces hit me exactly right after that was done. And I was like, I totally understand when that water spurted out of, for me, that film where the guy's washing dishes and the water spurts out and it falls onto the stuff. For me, that was like, that was like, I get that. Like, because you have to think about those. Each of those situations makes sense for one, somebody or the other. I think that's the larger point. You know, the, uh, let me put it this way. Like, a brand may face a particular problem and whatever that problem is. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they face that problem could differ from customer to customer. So even if if you look at uh, another piece of work that we had done for, let's say, a brand like Scriptbox, the problem was that, you know, people don't really pay attention to their tax planning. But why they don't pay attention to it differs from people to people. And therefore, we did a multiple kind of persona approach saying, For this kind of people, people who take anybody's advice on tax planning, there's a, we created a character called tax bola. And I think that, and and so on and so forth. So there was tax bola, there was tax statue. 
and uh, you know tax sufi a person who just doesn't care whether his money is taxed or not taxed and there's a bunch of assets built on each persona and again like you're saying uh anecdotally a lot of people told me you know i am that guy or i am this guy and that made sense for us and because it's so easy now in media to address the fact that not everyone uh has the same problem uh or not everyone approaches the same problem in the, in in a similar way in when it was broadcast you had to kind of you know take a bet on which would be the most macro way to address this issue both the examples you kind of picked up also are what are termed as startup brands right because obviously they're obviously much larger now but the the, the thought process is that how i mean and this is something which i which i've actually i i i've asked around a bit and I, and i feel there is something there is that is the mindset different for 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 brands like these in terms of just what they expect out of their partners is it rather than what let's say a traditional large scale fmcg or any of these uh, business have function is the, is is the way to work with them different is 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 how we need to look at it different both from a creative as well as a business standpoint that i i would say uh, i mean like personally uh, i experienced that they're very different animals uh the the startup brand or the, or the tech brand client has a a totally different approach to marketing uh, and it's it's also i think horses for courses maybe that's that individual has uh, functioned differently earlier on when let's say uh, he or she were on an fmcg brand so i think it's more the nature of the business that dictates the the nature of the manager yeah because uh, there have also been cases where people have made the shift from fmcg to a startup brand and their brand of brand management changes you know so uh, it it is different and what is different is one that there is a lot more agility required if you are a startup brand so uh, you're not really cooking uh, an insight and uh, research is uh, you're not significantly researching something you you're, you're they are they are having to operate from their gut sort of learn on the fly, yeah. put things out yeah stay more actively in conversation with their audience so it's i would say tech tech driven brands are certainly uh, i mean we've found them at lishiram and i have found them behave in a slightly different way from non tech uh, driven brands but it's not a startup or 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 you know some question of a startup i mean if you look at a brand that we handle called dream 11 it's a unicorn Right, you can't call it a startup. Yeah. But the way they behave yeah. Yeah. is very different from the way a lot of other companies behave, and they are not a startup. They are just tech driven. So I think fundamentally, it's it's that culture. Are you a tech driven company? And then if you are, then things become a lot more like what Shreya was talking about. Does that do they look at it different from a business standpoint as well? Because uh, one is the agility they look at, but also when they look at each of like just the level of involvement they want. Because obviously. a tech driven company always has a level of deep involvement in in all parts of the process and and the framework of it um do they do you say that they require a lot more involvement across the board um than you would normally give because i go back to planning right and for me planning's been the most interesting thing to learn over the years as a process of what um agencies have already done uh, always done is the fact that there is this long standing process of building out brands and that whole planning aspect of it um whereas when you look at a tech i think i like the word tech driven brand if if you have that um they ex- they want all of that but they want that to happen at a pace and to also be agile enough to be able to like kind of pivot when it needs to etc yeah. um do you see that as the real change in mindset or do you see that a real larger problem uh, not problem but the larger difference in the mindset it's quite uh, yeah it's quite close to what what the situation really is probably so they are there uh, Uh, they seem to also have the courage or the they know that they need to pivot if they need to like because of the environment they're working in they are also <clears throat> faster to pivot than a lot of other companies and really as far as the planning process concern is concerned uh, so there is a slightly differentiated product that at that at tilt we we kind of put out as far as strategic planning is concerned so it's what we call full brain thinking right Uh, so that's that's what we call it and it's uh, basically our planning teams are made up of a left brain thinker and a right brain thinker so at any given point of time creativity and data are kind of cooking the whole dish right from the start 
Uh, and therefore, uh, whether it's a tech driven brand or not a tech driven brand, uh, yeah. the planning process, as far as we are concerned, pretty much remains similar. I think data is the big game changer in planning in the sense that uh, the, uh, like we used to have creative teams all the time, but now this planning is a planning team because of this uh, data science scientist variety of planner and a classical uh, culture, culture planner. planner, if you may call call it so. And then there is also some uh, digital sort of media landscape kind of planner and, and all of them coming together is planning. So that's another big one. Like in, in our older agencies, there was just planner. Planner is usually a cultural planner. Someone who's looking for the insight. Yeah. If I take a uh, step back and, and, and kind of talk to both of you about your journeys before this as well, just various kind of, so um, let me uh, start with you, Shiram. Uh, when did you start off and how would you always, uh, you thought you'll end up being here? Like if, if this is what you thought it'll evolve into or was was the aim something different altogether? No, it's been so long that it's, it's a, it is an, uh, like a gradual evolution you know, so I'm not feeling any severe, severe jolts out of any older world. It's it's just happened. I've just like sort of slid into wherever I am at this point in time. Because so I started out in like ninety nine, two thousand. Yeah. But was 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 uh, being creative uh, in a in a, in a creative industry always the point of focus when you, before you started off, etc. No, I knew I wanted to write. I did. I did uh, briefly. Uh, work at a PR agency trying to write some press releases. <laughs> I'm bored of it. So I think uh, somewhere the tendency was to write something slightly more snackable, you know, not like elaborate. So journalism consider and say, no, it's, it's more elaborate. Maybe we need to do littler pieces. Hmm. So that's how advertising happened and some college seniors were there who were already in it and said it's fun. And it was the I mean, it is really, I, I think that the kind of fun people have today uh, doing memes and making those chips, it's the same fun we had uh, do making making yeah. acts. Because back then, that was the event. And somebody was paying you for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and it's, and Lintas is uh, like a deep end of, is, it's like being thrown into the deep end of that pool, you know early on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nobody asks you if you know how to write a film or not. You have, it's your job. Like, Just write. Like, write the film already. You to take this job now, write a film. <laughs> <laughs> so, you just end up writing some very bad ones and then suddenly one day you write one good one and then you know the difference between bad and good and then you try to do more good ones. Rajiv, how about you? How did, how did, how did, uh, what was the aim when you started off? Or, or was it's, it's quite uh, ironic because my first ever job was as a copywriter. And oh. then I kind of quit that and I joined this really... Oh, I still try, yes. I still try. So that was my first first job that I got, like where I had a job offer and a letter. And, everything. and then uh, I kind of realized that I mean, the pay was really bad. And uh, at that time, uh, I got another offer. I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I got an offer to work in a tea uh, broking firm, a commodity broking firm, where I then found, uh, you know, I was very young and I found the proposition very attractive because I got my own house, I got my own car, I got a club membership. And, and I was blown away till... About five, six years later, I realized that, okay, I was not meant for this. And uh, mm. I had gone on a holiday to Bangalore and uh, a friend of mine called me and said, listen, are you still interested in advertising? I said, yeah. yeah. And uh, she said, you know, come on over, there's an opening. And I went there and I got the job. And here I am. Uh, that was in 2004. And that's pretty much yeah. my, I've worked only in one agency before Tilt. Mm-hmm. And that's Lindas. Yeah. And first I worked in the Bangalore office and then I worked in the Delhi office. And then uh, I joined my friend Sridham and Joe and the rest of us at Tilt to, you know, took that dive. As yeah, they say, is geography. <laughs> 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 so, 
So when you guys actually like uh, decided to kind of head out and and, and start Tilt, right? I mean, what, what what was the overwhelming thought process in terms of, okay, there is a need to kind of change the way things function or, or what, what, what are your thoughts when you started off? See, it was essentially Joe, uh, who is the, uh, who is our principal founder. Yeah. He uh, sort of first took time off from uh, Lintas and started to develop the idea of starting out something. And he I think he knew back then that there was a, there is a massive need gap. Agencies desperately needed to reinvent themselves was something all of us knew. And you could you could feel the uh, feel the times changing actually. And our response couldn't have continued to be what it always was but that that feeling keeps brewing and uh, when people reach this point in their curves where they feel like uh, the only way to do it is if you you know start from zero again yeah but it's also, not i think all of us uh, all of us were cocky enough to kind of uh, say that you know if we do this we must do this where we have nobody to blame or applaud for our success or failure but ourselves because in as much as, you know, in our past avatars, we wanted to do something, there was always, you were always part of a system. And that system was somehow always larger than you as an individual. And, and uh, when we kind of got together, we knew that if we succeeded, then we would succeed because we succeeded. And if we failed, you know, there was nothing to protect us. And I think you need to have a little bit of confidence and a lot of cockiness to kind of actually do that. Because we were all pretty much set in our careers earlier. Hmm. So, and that that's actually one of the most interesting parts. Because you we you set done, this up. We, we could have done that. Our old jobs to advertising yeah. actually. Like, <laughs> 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 that sounds fair. That's like. I was like that. 2018, you guys started off, obviously, with a new model. Now, with with COVID and and everything that is happening around it, and, and now post COVID life, um, there obviously parts which you would see a lot more fast tracked in terms of just mindset from brands and everybody else. Um, so, which which are those aspects which you see um, both from how you concept, just from a strat uh, creative as well as from a business standpoint, which parts do you kind of see being fast tracked a lot more? I will not talk about how it's happening now. I'm saying post-COVID because it, oh, happening now for me is still a in-between process, at least in my head. But how do you? What do you see a fast track process? See, one, I feel that people are going to come out of this whenever we all do come out of this, very hungry and very uh, restless and impatient to kickstart businesses. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, decision making is going to be a lot more uh, clearer, faster. The luxury of uh, time to you know mull over things, people are not going to to take it because they this now is exactly. <laughs> you're done with your luxury of time for a long long while you know. So my suspicion is that everyone is going to be a lot more sharper, clearer because uh, targets are going to be still there, brutal, and a lot of catching up to do. So everyone is like, I can see that even now our interactions with clients, you know, they're all on overdrive. They're, they're trying, they're trying to fix it and get back on track. So effectively, yeah. that uh, it's, a, it's going to be a human level of effort at every, uh, you know, it's not just professional, but it's definitely going to be there in this uh, in our business. Like, it, we want to put it out fast. No, no time for bullshit, and you know, like. And people are going to be held responsible and accountable for bringing things back on track. Yeah, and I think people will be uh, will will actually hide less behind the term process because everybody will be wanting to come out and you know with all guns blazing. And in fact, Sriram and I were speaking about it this morning when we were having a chat. Uh, we just found that the amount of time taken or the process is followed, while all of the processes are still being followed, uh, yeah. just the time given to a certain part of the process is just truncated. So I feel that's going to continue because everybody's, like Shiram was saying, everybody's going to want to bounce back really quickly. I saw an interview that Mr. Piyush Pandey did uh, a few days ago. It, uh, 
and he was saying that the big thing that has happened is uh, that clients have realized that they can comfortably trust their uh, partners because this physical presence and ppming and show me everything and all of that is good it's great rigor at the yeah. end but a lot of good work yeah. has happened without all that rig- all that was deemed rigor you know yeah. so trust is also going to probably uh, hopefully increase and it's it's really what the point he landed in his interview i'm just saying it's it will be a great thing if it happens yeah, yeah. No, also i think it's because i think clients also turned on and i think anybody who ever asked me after this thing come fly to this city for a one hour meeting i'm going to say yeah. video call yeah yeah like, okay na zoom mein ho sakta hai what yeah exactly right. so I, i think that is done i think that's one of the best uh, outcomes of this thing contagious right. <laughs> the virus may still be there in the planes i will not uh, name the client but i will never forget a time when i was called i was i drove an hour and a half for a meeting to see a print out of an email like okay. that for me is something that etched in my mind for a lifetime yeah no i'm pretty those, sure none of that's going to happen now those people will lose their jobs if they haven't already lost <laughs> yeah but i i also think that what's what's interesting is just the even the production process right because you guys have studios and 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 i also the more we look at how we started even to shoot stuff you would traditionally always have this you know like that like you mentioned ppm the fact that you would do you need necessarily need to have the client on set do you necessarily like now we don't even have a director on set your director is directing off zoom right now so that's literally how we're doing it so i think that's really opened up a lot of possibilities in that sense it has yeah my only thing no my uh, like it'll be a uh, personal creative victory would be to still maintain a level of design and aesthetic and not lose it because you have now the excuse to lose it yeah yeah i agree you know and uh, you you still can like design it with the constraints yeah i also think clients have gotten tired of the home shot video scene so now they wanted to look like how a quality uh, piece looks so that thankfully it went away very quickly yeah so. So I think the the initial few lockdown videos, if you noticed, were all a little like under uh, tacky, uh, underproduced in many departments, and then slowly everyone upped the ante on it. You know, anyway, the fundamental doesn't change, right? Your your viewer has to want to watch your ad, and there's only so much of the the quote unquote COVID ads that they can watch. And I mean, when when this all passes, advertising still has to continue to woo the consumer. Correct. Uh, a lot of the audience uh, which listens to this podcast right is really young and a lot of them and and whenever i speak to someone who was supposed to go for an internship supposed to start off a job um and they're all kind of wondering okay does what i've learned so far does that change do i need to look at a career differently in that sense um rajiv sir what would you kind of say to someone who's at that kind of a, a stage right now and, and if they're thinking about what their career kind of holds in terms of what where the industry is kind of going what would you say to them See, I am. I don't know. I am. I am. I am pretty much hopelessly in love with advertising. So I will always say that advertising will always remain in some form or the other. It will always be about telling a story about the brand and basically forming a connection between a complete stranger and your brand, and that will never change. And therefore. if your if your aptitude if your training if your vocation drives you to be in that business for sure advertising is for you where how how long that story is told for those things will continue to change and evolve and all of that but the fundamental uh, joy of advertising of introducing uh, a brand to a complete stranger and hoping like hell that stranger actually likes you that is a high that you know i have always tripped on and if anybody else kind of trips on that same high then yeah come on over share how about you what would you i have no real reason to worry about uh, uh, you know outdation of whatever you've learned so far in any case it is a business for uh, origin ideal in its ideal state it is a business for original thinkers so you will end up having to unlearn what you've learned in any case and with it become redundant way too fast yeah and with so much so much tech and uh, media vehicle op- options proliferating no 
you can you can never really know all of it but the moment you think you know something the next big thing is going to come so yeah. you no know, point like uh, if you're perturbed about it you'll be and en- perennially perturbed about it there's no you just have to be intuitive or something and trust your judgment and get on with it yeah towards the end of every episode i do this one piece which i like to call the humans of advertising um which has no context to what we've spoken about so far but it's just a set of random questions and me trying to be current joe um <laughs> and is it rapid fire <laughs> so uh, it is never rapid i have realized this after all these episodes but it is never rapid it is always going to be um, it sometimes becomes as long as the rest of the conversation that has happened so far but so i will let it evolve the way it does um for the people who would let's say you would meet a uh, professionally or would just meet uh, on and off what would they be surprised to know that you're a consumer of what are you a consumer of that would surprise people who don't know you as well as some of your closest friends would um shri ram i'll start with you uh, what am i like a brand or a, just a product it can be anything it can be anything could, could be something you watch could be something you uh, read about could be something could be random like i've had as, as i've had someone turn around and say i'm actually a, um, a professional gardener which i didn't even like a award winning gardener which i didn't even know was a thing so i had all those things one i'm 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 planting karela and chilies at home now yeah but other than that uh, i think man i'm a bloody consumer of uh, tobacco and rice <laughs> <laughs> Raj, what about you? I would have to say I'm a big consumer of uh, raw material for food because I love. I mean, that's a part of me. If I wasn't in advertising, I'd probably be a chef. Mm. So a lot of uh, time, effort, and money goes into buying things that I can use in my kitchen. I like that both the responses were food related in this uh, for this question. We are talking to a bong and a Tamil. Yeah, I mean, it has to be about eventually it'll end up on that. that is true uh and um, what can you put together in an instant rajiv will go with you first a phenomenal meal i mean chira eggs egg <laughs> i got you i mean was was your question about food putting together food or anything it's a very open ended question can be anything so uh, I've saw most times got food response but I sometimes got like really like random ones as well so yet again food is the number one top of having no chiram for for so long i would say a, a story i think he he puts together these really whacked out plots which you know you you can't you can't imagine that he just thought of so i think i i leave the edge to me and maybe let's let shiram stick to <laughs> the stories So I'm actually going to give him an aside question, Shira. How do you put together a good story based on this? I mean, if you like, I you have to be an observer of many things that happen around you. I always say I really don't have any any in-depth knowledge about anything. I just have my entire RAM is occupied with random trivia. I I surprise myself with why I know certain things. like i don't know why i know it but i know it and it's useless information that's sitting somewhere in some dark recess of my brain and so this uh, over over time this uh, little join the dots happens in your head you know and the more disparate jo- dots you can join and put together the more interesting the story becomes that's true. so i think that there are too many dots in the head and then i i, I enjoy sort of joining the most uh, unlikely dots that make, that actually makes total sense i, I i'm a, i'm a, a huge believer in useless information being the most important thing in our Shit life trivia man like i don't know like and and like, sometimes i the and i subject uh, rajiv and the gang to some some shit like it's unfiltered something will come out which somebody may latch on to and say this makes sense we can do something like this many a times that's how the story happens that you just probably said the first line of it so my follow up to that to rajiv rajiv what is the most random thing shiram has told you in the recent past what is the most random thing i i mean for me whenever shiram talks i don't know if whether it's random or whether it's purposeful or whatever it's just for me because i've 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 known him for over a decade now and it's just 
between him and me i think the the conversations are best left between him and me okay fair enough um anything you 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 watch read or consumed in general like uh, in terms of content that you would recommend to for people in recent times i just I tripped on this series recently called border town mm-hmm. and there is this homicide uh, detective in it the his the most refreshing homicide detective character written in recent times could easily be the protagonist of border town his uh, his character's name is kari and it's a finish series it's set in a little border town uh, in finland and it's sort of mm-hmm. between their headquarters in helsinki and this border town but you should watch this guy man if you have to write a character a homicide detective it's the freshest like i thought i'd seen it all from sherlock holmes to you know uh, all the danish i went to the scandinavian uh, detective series uh, a lot on netflix Was mm-hmm. this detective in border town is better than sherlock holmes it was easier to finish <laughs> <laughs> sorry how about what recently rajiv what, what has been your recent so i think i i i actually caught it pretty late in life but i am uh, i'm just about to finish god church oh yeah and mm-hmm. and i loved it i thought it was beautiful god church shetland man it's uh, there yeah. is one called uh, the valhalla murders valhalla murders yes yeah. which is icelandic i think so if you like this homicide detective uh, giri then it's good no cid for by the way no cid i did watch cid too it, that's the mindless thing you do like we all did let's address we all did at some point i love the cid i think genius cid Oh, it's pretty cool man. like there is no better spoon fed uh, homicide uh, these things than cid ever. yeah yeah zami pe khoon hai matlab iska matlab zarur ya khoon no no he picks up bullet with suppressing bullet iske iska matlab hai se bandook se mara hai ya to ye bike chalata hai like it is i I'll, i'll i'll love that show um and bef- and just before we wrap up uh, why will advertising not die and you kind of answered that earlier but i think i will that is my always last question so i'm telling you it is that ever mutating virus it's not a thing it's not a it's not a pair of jeans or it's it's i don't know it's called advertising perhaps uh, it's just this thing that's going to just be there and there's no way of killing it yeah it's the human yeah, as there are things to buy and people want to buy things they will always be advertised so it is a human tendency i'm saying assume there are no products and brands and advertising the way we know it has ended then you'll find one guy who will come on a podcast like this and still sell you something correct so i agree so it's never it's it's, it's word of mouth that just evolving super thank you guys thank thank you for doing this it's uh, and um, I think there are a lot of insights there in terms of just the evolution of things. That right? I think that's what, what I thought was most interesting is just the perspective, the fact that you have worked in in agencies for a period, but also the the fact that that pivot towards this mindset act is actually what I thought was. Yeah, there's a lot to learn from that. Especially for a, for a lot of students, especially who kind of come out and say, "Okay, I always thought my job would be X because that is what my college has told me." Which is it is never X is what my response has been, and I think. both of kind of answer that in your own way recently and um, then i mean adrian homes and all these legendary purana zamane ka creative directors part yeah. of an agency and each one of them in the agency is 72 68 and they call it london's oldest agency now <laughs> so uh, i'm just seeing what martin sorrell is doing right now and i'm like that is another another scene all together so i'm like yeah i don't know it's all it's all like, valid and it's all relevant there is There is a role for all of us to kind of play. Yeah. Super. Thanks guys. Thank you so much Varun. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So good to meet you Varun. Thank you. So good to meet you guys too. I hope you enjoyed that show. We'd like to thank our sponsors this week Paytm Money. 
you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Guys, it's been a really, really cool week. We've had a ton of interesting stuff come out. We had an episode with Kunal Shah on Cyrus Says. We've had really stellar episodes on Pesa Vesa, Advertising is Dead, Filter Coffee Podcast on Empowering Series all over the place. Definitely do check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy what's been going on this week. And thanks for listening, and we hope to catch you again next week. How many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep or lose weight or be more productive? How many times have you failed? Hi, my name is Ashton Doctor. Tune into my show, The Habit Coach Podcast, where we focus on creating small, tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big, impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app. Entertainment is like food for the brain. It's a window to culture and a great way to understand the world around us. The internet has changed what it means to be an entertainer, creating new storytellers with millions of fans. It has spawned a new breed, the story sellers, those behind the scenes creating the business for this ecosystem. They work with brands, platforms and channels who are keen to capitalize on an audience hungrier than ever for more stories. I am Vineet Kanabar and I have a ringside view to how stories are told and sold. On my show, I bring you creators, artists, executives and marketers for a freewheeling conversation around the business of entertainment. Tune in to Storytellers and Storysellers for personal stories, analysis and criticism every Thursdays as I talk to the brightest minds telling or selling great stories today.